recording. We are the Women Matters on, when the hell are we? In June, in June, 7th of June, uh, 21. And Gertraud, have a nice time. She has to leave because she has to do things. So we were talking about birthdays. But if you want to do it as a topic, because I don't think we have um, a topic which we agreed upon this time, we do check in. I would like the two early birds to have a check in, start with Christine. Okay, um, good morning. Uh, checking in. Um, I don't know what has happened. I don't know what's happened these past two weeks. It's, it's just a blur. Um, oh, we went on a, a, a little trip over Memorial Day weekend, um, holiday weekend, not this past Sunday, but the, the weekend before. And that was nice. We saw our daughter who's um, got her last year of training. And so we got a chance to be with her. Uh, this is Northern California, so there's redwoods and beautiful trees, and that's my favorite part of going there. Um, I meet up with a friend, and we do a lot of hiking in the redwoods, and um, yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Uh, where I am, there's not a lot of trees here. It's We have palm trees, and we have eucalyptus trees, um, but we don't have the kind of forests uh, that are up there. So for me, that's very magical. Um, there were a lot of trees where I grew up on the east coast of the United States. It's very forested there. So yeah, that was that was special. It always is uh, renews my spirit and gives me good exercise. And I love that. So I think that's the most significant thing that's happened in the past two weeks. Yeah. And I will pass on to Victoria. Um, I'm not one of the early birds. I'm one of the late zebras, but I will start anyway. Thank you, Christine. Um, that sounds so wonderful. And um, we were, Beatrice and I were just talking about that the other day because um, she's a forest lake person since she was born in um, Austria and grew up in Europe. And I'm an ocean person because I grew up in... Um, on the ocean. But actually when I was really little, we lived in the redwoods. And so um, in really Northern California up in, I don't even know what the county is, but way, way, way up. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm a little bit of that too, because it sounds lately I've been longing to be in the forest and see rabbits and birds and, and, and <laughs> et cetera. Um, I have birds here. Oh, so my news is that the bird's nest just outside my window that I can see. Um, unfortunately, I can't show you because it's too dark, but um, I mean, the, the, it's in a corner, a hidden corner as it should be. Um, last year, the two little tiny blue eggs were stolen by a horrible blue, blue jay that I named Bad Bird. And I haven't seen him since. I guess he felt guilty. But this year, since Bad Bird was no longer around, um, the little baby, the little eggs hatched and there are three baby birds and the biggest, they're big, medium and small. And the big one yesterday, I, I kept the last few days I was hearing it sort of a purr, purr, and it turned out he was standing at the very edge and he was testing. And um, yesterday he, he had his first flight, which was very dramatic. I mean, it was, he went very far and he didn't fall or anything. So, um, so that's my news. So I'll pass it on <laughs> to Beatrice. Hello everyone. I'm the other late zebra. <laughs> every, every couple of weeks, my mother texts me before this meeting and says zebra dress. <laughs> and if it's not in the laundry, then we, we put them on. Um, so let's see, what's my news? Um, it's summer, humid, terrible summer has begun. I hate the humidity. Um, it always makes me tired and kind of irritable and we have arrived. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to 
stay focused and stay awake and not be annoyed by the humidity in the next few weeks. Um, the big news is though that I booked my flights to go to California um, July, July 20th through August 17th. So I'll be there for a month. Um, which you can see my mother's very excited about. I'm very excited about it too. It'll be nice to, to come back. I wasn't there for the holidays. I haven't been there since September of last year. So um, it'll be wonderful to spend time with family and to spend time with friends and get out of the humidity <laughs> and have a little bit of a break from work. Um, so that's exciting. Um, in the past two weeks, I got to go, I went to the Met Museum for the first time in a very, very long time, which was fun. Um, and uh, I had a friend visiting from Boston, a college friend. So that was, that was nice. Um, so I've just, it's been nice to get a little bit more friend time in my life. Um, and let's see, I had something else occurred to me when I, before I checked in, but I can't think of what it was. So I'll leave it there. And <laughs> mention it later if I think of it. Um, I'll pass to Monia. Yes, hello from Vienna. It's hot, it's terribly hot. And I'm just not used to, to it. But I had to go outside today. And this week is uh, every second day I check in with a doctor about ears, eyes, and so on. And most of us have obviously postponed all these visits because of Corona, and uh, so now it's just happened. maybe I will need new glasses and so on. Uh, when I woke up this morning, I thought of Victoria because I had one nightmare after another, and one of the usual ones, the ones I'm used to. Uh, being late or not making a date, that was, yeah, that was just <laughs> not that exciting. But then I dreamt of a forest fire, which I've never done before. And it was, it's, it was uh, speeding through this wood and it was, we knew we were in a vacation home and we knew we had to leave very soon. And I really, I pulled myself out of this nightmare because it was just, an, yeah, it was terrible. Never had it before and I don't want to have it again. But I was thinking about Victoria because she claims that she has nightmares and I sympathize with you. Yeah. So I pass on to Martini. Martini, I had muted you because there was a lot of noise. So you have to unmute. Yes. Hello, everybody. Um, let's see. I had just a day and beautiful um, experience. We listened to Beethoven. It was in all over in Europe in nine. Uh, big cities, they um, gave a concert on Beethoven and then the, uh, the symphonies of Beethoven. It, it was just beautiful. I, I uh, maybe Monia, you have seen it as well. Have you seen it as well? No. Oh, it was so nice. Uh, but uh, we were sitting in front of the um television and outside it was beautiful today it was uh, beautiful as well and i went three times for swimming so i i uh, feel fresh and what else experience do i have um yeah uh, it is silent uh, 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 around my exhibition. Uh, I do not hear very much and I have to inter, in, invite some women and that we go together. Uh, we, we do the exhibition and that I can share a little bit of uh, my experience with them. 
And uh, now I, uh, that is what I experienced the last weeks. Heidi, maybe you um, take over. I uh, checking in. Yeah, I have uh, two people from Germany here and we have very good uh, conversations really. You know, I have the impression that I, I am about uh, starting to attract the right people, let's say in this way. <laughs> That's very nice. Uh, they are stay only until tomorrow morning. So we had a good lunch together just now. Mostly the things all of my vegetable garden, which is also a satisfaction to have, you know, fresh salad collected in the morning and eaten at lunch. Yeah, and I love to to be together with people and I start to neglect all this, um, you know, my website stuff and I forget what do we have uh, a topic and things like this It has become sort of second line, you know, when I when I have the possibility to to be in person with with people, then I forget it. I had to put the, today for us, I had to put the alarm clock on. So otherwise I might have forgotten it. Why when I sit always in front of the computer, you know, that's uh, not a problem, popping up reminders and all sorts of things. But when you are outside and uh, it is nice in the sense of warm enough, uh, I, I hope I can be here until the end because if, uh, the um, thunderstorm is really coming, then I will uh, go to the cell phone and uh, switch off the computer. I don't want to lose the computer to uh, lightning stroke. I have already had two computers damaged in the past year. So in case I disappear, you just continue and I will come back in another way. Yeah. Can you hear this? No, probably you can't. This is from the sky. Yeah, I, what I heard a little bit, I don't remember if we had a topic, but if we had, if somebody remembers, then it's fine. Otherwise, we could talk the challenges of summer. Now, when we, for me, when we are in winter, I look forward so much to summer. And then when it's really summer here, 35 centigrade or something, which is not now, we have 25 maybe, uh, then it's, you know, oh, and then you're looking forward to winter. What is it? <laughs> How can we make peace with the seasons? <laughs> that would be a suggestion. If you have another suggestion, let me know. Well, my suggestion would be, how do you deal with nightmares? I don't have any. How can I participate? Oh, lucky you. <laughs> But okay, you if you are interested, everyone I, else, it's fine. <laughs> Monia and I can have our own meeting about that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remembered what it was that I wanted to say at, at check-in, um, which is yesterday I went to my friend's apart apartment. Well, she's actually house sitting for someone else. So it was a, a friend's friend's apartment. Um, but we sat down and we we were talking about how the last year and a half has been such a blur. And, and how, what we've actually accomplished. And we sat down um, on this friend's roof with a glass of wine at sunset. And we made a list of every single thing that we accomplished during the pandemic or everything we could think of. And both of us filled up pages back to front. Um, and it felt really good to, to honor the things that we had done in, in what felt like a blur finding finding those gems that came out of it and the ways that we grew or the things that we accomplished. Um, we did a lot of like personal list making. We also did a writing um, seminar, not seminar, but it was kind of a, a masterclass about values. And we had to write down a list of people that inspired us and what qualities inspired us and qualities of ourself uh, as people or and as artists and then find connections between the different qualities of the people that we admire versus our qualities. Um, anyway, I don't know why I'm bringing, I guess I'm bringing it up as like also inspiration for other topics about, you know, how you honor your past or how you honor 
the qualities in yourself or what kind of people like Heidi was saying, what kind of people do you attract based on qualities that you admire, qualities that you want to see in yourself or I'm also totally on board to talk about the weather or the seasons or um, the aging, the, <laughs> the aging was brought up at the beginning of the call. Um, but I just wanted to, I just remembered what I was going to share. So I thought I'd share it. Um, I'll, I'll address summer only because, uh, it's always had, uh, a strong influence over me, uh, for just kind of a lighter feeling. The days are long. It seems like there's more opportunity to be outdoors and people obviously getting together more during the summer. So it's always felt a little bit easier, breezier um time of year that people are more active but also just more relaxed um the only thing i don't like about summer and maybe victoria can can uh, sympathize with this is we get a lot of traffic because people come to san diego as a destination in the summer because of the beach and so that's a little bit of a downer because you know you're sitting in traffic uh, much more than you are in other times of the year, but um, that's the only downside. And that summer has always, uh, you know, since childhood, obviously getting out of school and that freedom, and it's continued to feel like that to me. It's like ah, oh, you know, there's there's just I give myself I guess more permission to. Um, I don't know, to do what I want to do. I don't feel as necessarily as focused or as regimented as I do during other times of the year. So it feels more free. I myself don't go to the beach, but um, <laughs> it's there if I want to. I walk on the beach, uh, but uh, sitting on the beach um, and just staring at the waves isn't something I, uh, I do at this point in my life. So anybody else have anything about the summer? and what it's like for them. I just am thinking of Vivaldi's summer um, and the the big thunderstorm that happens in the concerto. I'm thinking of Heidi. <laughs> so it seemed to like, I don't know, I, it, my mind immediately, I, that's the soundtrack in my head right this minute is, um, because of course you're also in Italy, it just fits so perfectly. So um, you should listen to it later <laughs> after this call. Yeah, do you mean Vivaldi? Uh, yeah, the Quattro Stagione, the, the I summer. Mean, I love that. It's, that yeah. it's a great piece, yeah. I, I, actually, I actually deliberately waited until it was summertime to study it. I, I, I learned all four concerti, but but I thought I'm going to learn them in the seasons to which they apply. So, <laughs> and it was, it was nice. I mean, and it's really, you really feel the seasons through the music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can say something to summer. I don't like to freeze. And in summer, it's the only time where even in the evening, normally it's nice and warm. Maybe it's a little bit too warm during the day, but for me, it, it's worthwhile that in the evening, you don't have to wear pullovers and stuff like this, which in Germany, almost always you have to do. And the life outside, I love that a lot. And the days, the long days, also I get a, maybe a little, too little sleep, but then I do Italian siesta, you know. And at the moment, my day normally starts at about six o'clock or 6.30. And then normally I go to the gardens watering and taking care for the, the beasts, the animals. Oh, I have forgotten to say that we had um, visits from two dogs of a neighbor. And one has already done a lot of harm to others, but also to this. The dog of Al Alessio, he got bitten get badly, very badly, and I was very near around. It was near the garden, the vegetable garden, so I took a hack and, uh, and had to separate them. 
And still we had to go immediately to the vet and he's half naked and has a drainage because of the inside uh, hurts and so on. So that's uh, not so nice. That has happened this week in, on Thursday, tomorrow. I have to go there again. What's the most upsetting thing to me is that there are people who don't take care for their animals. That was at 6.30 in the morning, she was asleep. And he had done that already five, six times. And she doesn't realize that it would be your duty to take care for your dog and keep him bound or in a, in a fence or something. And you cannot just have people in fear, people and animals in fear, but I don't know how to resolve these questions. Anyway, I'm happy that the dog it didn't, you know, he is still alive. I had to take the responsibility because it's of Alessio and Alessio is not here. That's my young uh, co-worker, whatever you want to call it. And um, he didn't have, have to have they tried to give him only local anesthesia. So that was not because the dog is 14 years old and quite big. So it's really would have been dangerous. So that was check in summer. Yeah, I love to, to, to see growth, not so much the grass, I have to say, but uh, the vegetables and, and, and in a few days, the apricots will be ready. Now the mulberries are ready and a certain little plums are ready. And this for me is the gift of nature. And I just, it's sort of like a, a wonder for me, like a miracle of nature. So I really love that. And in winter, always inside, heating, mm, yeah, not so nice. And that's also a reason why I don't like too much to be on the computer because really work I do on the big computer and the big computer is inside. So I have to stay inside and I like, in summer to be outside. So I've said enough. I hate the summer. <laughs> Everyone's talking about how fabulous the summer is, but um, I, I don't like heat. I don't do well with heat. Um, I'd much rather be cold and be able to put on a lot of layers, but when it's hot, you can only undressed so much and then it's you know you've hit a limit and then you can't do anything about it after that um so I yeah I don't like the summer also you know in the times when I was in school and you know it was a school break or um in general even if it's not a school break even if I'm working or something people take summer vacation and that's the time to be taking a break but um well, my mother and I both have this problem, but we're not very good at taking real breaks. Instead, when there's empty empty time or space on our calendar, um, it's the time that we fill the most and jam pack it with activities and whatever. <laughs> um, and so summer is usually very busy and very hot and kind of exhausting. Um, and yeah, not, I feel... <laughs> Strange. I'm I'm not usually a negative person about things, but this is something I, for right now I'm feeling not so happy about. Um, and I much prefer springtime or fall or even winter. I love the snow and I love being cozy and um, I love wearing layers and scarves and hats and <laughs> bundling up. And it's just that to me is lovely and have a fire or whatever. And and in the fall, the colors and the, the fresh, crisp air. And in the springtime, everything coming back to life and beautiful. Like th those are my, the seasons that I enjoy. The summertime is just hot, <laughs> in my opinion. But do you like the longer days? I think the longer days are nice, but it's not, they're not nice enough to get to over outweigh <laughs> the other things. <laughs> I completely agree. I'm, I'm a little bit shocked just because um, uh, Conrad, my late husband, always used to say that the best time of year for every human being was the time that that person was born. And Beatrice's um, birthday is July 16th, so it's right in the middle of the summer. So, um, so well, Papa's not here, so he can't hear you. <laughs> hear you. 
blaspheme against his theories. Um, and, and I was born in September and I always thought that was, uh, so when he told me his theory, I thought, oh, well that makes perfect sense because I, I always waited and waited and waited and waited to get back to school because I loved school so much. And my birthday comes right at the beginning of school. Um, and I love the fall colors too. I mean, I'll never forget. Well, anyway, we're not talking about summer, are we? Um, so back to summer. Um, I, the one thing to me that absolutely, absolutely redeems summer. Oh, I like the late, the, the long days, Christine. That's a good point. Um, and when I lived in Tasmania, it was really magical because the sun was, it was sunny till like 1030 or something at night. It was really amazing. And um, I'll never forget, because we used to come back to California every Christmas, which is at the height of summer in Australia. And then, and I'd get used to the, you know, the conventional Christmas time as I remembered it, you know, with very short days. And then we'd fly back to Australia and I'd never forget that first day, the, the miracle of like, the day just going on and on and on and, and all my friends coming over to say, oh, we're glad you're back. And we'd hang around and, and it was, you know, the sun was out till 10 at night. It was, just, that was really, I'll never forget that. That was all, it was always a miracle, even though it happened every year the same way. Um, but my favorite thing about summer is swimming in my pool for an hour or 55 minutes and 47 seconds or something um, for the duration of <laughs> Glenn Gould's um, Goldberg variations. And that is my daily ritual, um, which I'm gonna start again soon. Um, the, it's, we've had kind of a cold, it's a little bit on the cold side, isn't it, Christine? I mean, it's been, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird, so far it doesn't feel like summer has started. And the birds confirm that because they should have been born months ago, as far as I can figure out. But um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the Goldbergs. I always call it swimming with the Goldbergs. And my friend did a hilarious picture of, um, of a, this old married couple in the pool with me, they were the Goldbergs because of course it's barbaric to call them the Goldbergs instead of the Goldberg variations. All right, so I've said enough, but I agree wholeheartedly otherwise with Beatrice with the, um, it's even going around naked wouldn't be adequate for my level of heat at this, at the summer, in the summertime. And of course that's not proper. So I agree with the, I'd rather put on a million layers than have to suffer even in a, a, an ephemeral chemise. I want to connect to the, um, to, to the topic of um, ammonia. The only reason why we have to cut down the grass here is because of fires. So that's for me, otherwise I would leave it, you know. Mm. So fire is a part of summer too. And you in California, you know that, but also in other places of the world and here too, you know. So how is it connecting with your dream? Oh, well, well, it, the amazing thing was it was a green wood and, that, and all of a sudden one tree was in flames and that pointed it and said and this and then it, it spread so um, let's talk about something else when i was a child i loved summer uh it was the greatest season of all and now uh i don't uh, take the heat as well so we have a cool apartment no air conditioning yet but uh, if it gets, and it's nice to be outside and have uh, dinner at, on the balcony, which we are planning for tonight. And, but then there are the wasps and my husband is allergic uh, against them. And so he has a, a racket, an electric one, and then he waits for the wasp to appear to join our dinner. So it's never quite peaceful now. And we have uh, gardens in the back of the house and the neighbors enjoy sitting outside. Some of them 
don't care about all laws against drugs and they use drugs and they get very loud. Then the police comes, somebody finally snaps and calls the police. So summer isn't as, as, as nice as it used to be. And uh, of course we go on vacation. We go to a lake, to our beautiful Austrian lakes and we swim there. And I envy Martini that she can go into the Danube and swim because we don't have this possibility here. And my son-in-law just sent me a photograph of the dog who just, uh, who is a water dog. And he, she, uh, she, uh, she's so delighted when she's in the water and she, she swims. And, um, and of course, for a dog, it's also very hot because you have to really get their fur off to, so they can cool a little better. Um, no, I'm not as, well, I don't hate summer <laughs> yet. <laughs> But I'm not as excited about it. And I like spring and I like autumn. And well, I don't like the slippery roads and streets in winter. Um, yeah, I guess uh, when you age, you, you go, you pass through the seasons differently. And everything changes all the time. So that's just one of the changes in one's life. Um, I'm wondering if uh, we have around 25 degrees now, but it gets a lot hotter when you go outside into the streets. And uh, we still have all these regulations that there are only three people allowed in the pharmacy. So the others have to wait outside. And today I saw them, old people lined up in the sun, in the hot sun and waiting to get into the pharmacy. So I asked the pharmacist if they couldn't put up an awning or something. So well, they are going to think about it. But it's still, uh, we have a lot of old people in our district. And the summer is hard on most of them. So it's not that, it's not as beautiful as it used, as I, as I remember it, but nothing is as beautiful as you remember it. So, um, yeah. I'm not too thrilled about winter as well. So it's just that the in-between seasons that are nice. And we had a lot of rain this year and thunderstorms last, a couple last couple of days. Only Vienna was didn't have any thunderstorms. So yeah, forty four thousand thunder lightnings was in in one night. So that's just unbelievable. So that's also part of the summer: the thunderstorms and yeah, and the fire. Okay, I didn't sound too excited about summer as well. I'm sorry. <laughs> Martini, how is your son? can hear you. Yeah, we can even see you. Again, my handy. My husband is not um, at home and I uh, could not handle uh, his computer. So um, it is a little bit difficult, but it is okay. Uh, you see me. I yes. only see you, Heidi. Yes, yes, no. Um, uh, I am surprised. I love the colors of the summer. And the clear, um, the clearness in the air, I I do think it is so so. Uh, everything is the the green is, um, getting the sun of of uh, different uh, on different parts of the leaves, and it is uh, uh, 
bewegt sich, es, es it is um, twinkling or, or it is sparkling. I, I think the summer is very nice, but I have the possibility to go into the water when I'm too hot. I, I cannot uh, be lo very long in the sun, but I uh, do enjoy swimming very much. Since I was small, we this was the only sport we could um, uh, participate in swimming in Holland. And um, now I do not go to the Danube Monia uh, for swimming, but we have in our garden in Pedro and in in YouTube. YouTube, Heidi, how do you say that? That you can swim in there? Natural pond? Yes, yes. Yeah. So, um, and it is a, um, a long one so that you can swim. Uh, um, the, the, uh, and then I'm cold again. And then I, I am fresh to do some work again. So, uh, this is how I come through the day. Uh, to, uh, and I enjoy it. And what I like in the summer, I have no appointments. And my calendar is free. It is open and, and I enjoy this very much. Yeah, this is what I like of summer. I uh, like it to, to be very free. I'd like to hear a little bit about how Martini and Victoria's um, events went. I think they were, you had them since the last meeting. And I was wondering how the exhibitions went and the concert, the lecture. Well, I went to Martini's exhibition. And uh, yeah, I, I liked it very uh, well, liked it. I uh, was fascinated by some of her perspectives on uh, when Jesus met the woman at the well, the Samaritan, Samaritan woman. And I can't still make it out what fascinated me so much about this because it was a book, but it was transparent. So there is a lot of transparency when people meet at, and talk to each other and really listen to each other. And yeah, and of course uh, the paintings, as you may have seen on Martini's homepage, uh, she is an excellent observer of the essence of people. So her portraits are really fascinating and I wonder how 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 you manage it, Martini, because if your talent or your diamond, as they call it, is really present, there isn't much you can do against it. You just has have to obey. Or how would you see it, Martini? Um, Monia, this is a, a very fine question because this was the hardest thing I, I had to fight with. This is why I also painted the fight with God. Because if you um, are inspired, then uh, you want to be just by yourself. But we had decided for the children and my husband. So I had to die all the time when I had an inspiration and I had made a an, um, an, uh, an date with God. And I said, give it to me back if I need it. Uh, I, I talked in, in this way. Um, I, I do know uh, first my homework, uh, being a housewife and, and a 
uh, wife. And so, uh, you know, this struggle I had all the time. Yeah. But um, there was also the time um, uh, I have an only an, an own room that I can close the door. And there is an, an awful disorder. But in the kitchen and in the where the where all we met, there need to be an order for me. Otherwise, I can't handle it anymore. But I can handle the disorder in my uh, studio, and uh, then I feel very patient and very still and very uh, happy. So I come back to that point. But um, maybe you also notice that I'm very. Um, um, I do not go into detail, de detail in the painting. I'm, I'm um, very uh, quickly, and then I'm, um, I am happy with it. And uh, for me, for from just for myself, and I can remember that um, Rubens said. Rubens, you know Rubens, he said, I am not interested in doing the painting, but I am interested in uh, to transform the idea what I got, the inspiration, and my pupils can do the painting. And I thought, this is what I would like to do, but I have no pupils who are doing the painting for me. <laughs> so, you know, uh, and um, what I showed over there was a little bit difficult because it is over a long time. And now today you have an uh, you exhibition, a series of things. I have them in my uh, cast, you know, I have them at home, but uh, at, at, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I think I have already uh, said enough now. And if, if there comes another question, then maybe I'll ask, answer this question. But uh, it is a struggle. And I think um, the people today uh, doing the home office is what I did all the years, uh, home um, studio. You know, it, it, uh, you, were, you are confronted with everyday life. And, and uh, I'm, I cannot go like a man who is painting and say, um, um, forget that, that today, uh, uh, and I am hungry, I want to, that you, uh, that my husband uh, makes eat a, a food for me. No way, my husband could go his own uh, direction in his job. You know, so this is a thing to handle, but I, I think I handled it <laughs> in a way. Okay. Uh, you mentioned <clears throat> in your talk there uh, that you taught. Yeah. So uh, could you really imagine that you, that one of your pupils would finish your painting? Yes. No, <laughs> right. <laughs> Definitely, because I was wondering about Rubens, uh, how he could stand it that others then. Yeah. Oh, but by Rembrandt, uh, by Rembrandt, do you hear me? Yeah. Well, now you're gone, but keep talking. No, uh, Rembrandt, um, many uh, of his pupils painted his uh, paintings ready. And now um, the historians are coming to the point, oh, this is not Rembrandt. This is not an original Rembrandt because they are analyzing it uh, uh, in the very detail. You know, this was um, uh, the, uh, the way they did it. Right. Now I have Victoria, to jump in. Victoria, you. <laughs> <laughs> the so-called Rembrandt team, infamous. 
um, there's an equivalent theological um, group here in California called the Jesus Seminar. Um, these are, well, it's just my, my own humble opinion shared by however many, many scholars. Um, it's, I mean, my, in my cynicism, I always say it's the way to, that these people stay employed. Um, and my husband figured out that every 50 years or so, um, the attributions to artists would reverse. <laughs> And that was to keep the art historians in business so they could stay employed and um, publish their, their new findings. Um, the Rembrandt, yeah, actually it's, um, it's been going on for, for several decades now or more than that, but the, my late husband was so irate about it that, um, that he used to go to great lengths. We would even go and visit certain works that had been removed from the gallery walls. Um, Dresden was, was infamous for this. They took all their Rembrandts off the walls and put them down in the basement because the Rembrandt team had come and said, oh, these none of these are by Rembrandt. Um, but uh, Conrad used to say, <laughs> the, he called it the Papageno, um, the Papageno test. He said that the Rembrandt team would go and, and look at paintings and they'd say, oh, Augen blau, hare, blonde. Yeah, das ist dann die Pamina. I mean, it was just so vague. And um, because all, all the, the, the Rembrandt, um, you know, because that's how Papageno identifies Pamina. It's so generic that any woman he came across could have been Pamina. Um, and what they found out was that the, um, obviously Rembrandt had a big, um, he had a lot of pupils and he worked closely with them, but they did not paint any of his paintings. On the contrary, he would just give out subjects um, because that was how he trained them. Every night they had to do a drawing on the spot um, of a story from the Bible and he would give them topics. He'd say, okay, tonight we draw, you know, um, the, the man at the wedding feast today. He would use the parables and, um, so he trained them and uh, in terms of the Rembrandt team, it's only the pigments. Obviously they all used identical pigments. That's why Conrad called it the Papageno test because it was the same red, the same blue, the same green. So the Rembrandt team has just gone around Europe saying, um, oh yes, well clearly, you know, this is, um, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I'm channeling my, my dead husband. But the Rubens thing is great, what you said, Martini. Um, and that for me was a huge revelation because I always hated Rubens my whole life. I just hated him. I thought he was the worst painter in the history of mankind until I lived in Vienna at the Albertina and saw Rembrandt's drawings. And when I saw his drawings, I thought, I thought wait, there's something strange going on here. These are the most beautiful, otherworldly, I mean, brilliant drawings. And then I started in museums. Whenever I was in museums, I would look at the, the little Rembrandt studies, the little oil studies, which are tiny, um, where he worked out. He, first he would do the drawing, then he would work out um, on, on, in a small study. And then he would hand those to his pupils who would do these massive altarpieces. And um, yeah, I think, I think if he hadn't been such a good businessman, like Monia said, he he wouldn't have been he wouldn't have been satisfied with the result. He would have said, "Well, this is this is coarse and vulgar and horrible compared to my beautiful little study." But he was a businessman, so and he was working also at that point in time as a diplomat. So um, he had other irons in the fires, they say. Sorry, I'm taking over the whole thing. It has nothing to do with summer, um, but <laughs> but I couldn't resist because Martini. Um, that's it's. That's such a, well, I mean, cause I'm an art historian. So that's a, a subject that's dear to my heart. And um, I have to keep representing my poor dead husband. Um, yeah, but what is with Rubens? Uh, you now talked about Rembrandt and not Rubens. So what oh, was- Oh, did, did I misspeak? No, the Rembrandt story was about the Rembrandt, the so-called Rembrandt um, team. You said, you said Rembrandt instead of Rubens at the end there. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, that was all Rubens. I when I shifted over to Ru so Rubens did the. Did, I've been talking about Rubens drawings and the Albertina, 
yeah. and Rubens oil sketches. And then these big, massive, I mean, they're so huge, most of his, you know, his altarpieces. And he had more commissions than he possibly could have ever fulfilled. So unlike a lot of artists like Raphael, who, who couldn't do 90% of his commissions, also because he died young, um, Rubens could, to, to, could fulfill all his commissions and make a huge profit. And he had this huge, if you've been to his house in Antwerp, it's like four stories high and it's, um, they, they keep it the way he had it. You know, he could, he could have up to, you know, 30 or 40 assistants at a time painting in his own house. And so it was, it was a business. It was like a factory. Um, but anyway, it was, so, so I think I just, anyway, but Martini, uh, so apropos Chris, now I'm talking way too much, but Christine's question, um, I have one more Boyce lecture, which is tomorrow night, which is actually it, sort of appropriate for this topic because it's on his Boyce's legacy. Why, why is it that um, he's being feted and celebrated literally all over the world this year for his centenary? What, what is it about this man that is so important in terms of what he left behind? Because a lot of people um, a lot of people believe that he was just a, um, a kind of charlatan and, but a kind of shamanistic charlatan and that it was his person, his being that was the artist. And when he died, everything died with him. But tomorrow night, I'm giving a lecture to prove that that's not only not true, um, but he's left a, a huge, I mean, some of the most important artists of our time were his pupils and his followers and, um, and they, you know, we're inspired in every sense by him and by his work. So, um, so it's very topical, but it's tomorrow night. So think of me tomorrow and I'll tell you next time how it went. <laughs> anyway, sorry, I, I, I hijacked this, but, um, but that's, that's for Conrad, bless his soul. Mm -hmm. I keep wondering, because at uh, Martini's uh, exhibition, there was a facilitator or mediator, or how would you have called her, Kulturvermittlerin. So, also this is, yeah. hmm? uh, we hear you. So an historian, art historian, and uh, an uh, Vermittlerin. Yeah, so I feel that Victoria is just uh, just as well. You are a mediator, or a facilitator of culture because I now see the house of Raymond. <laughs> it's, it's great the way you just point to so many things. Yes. Yeah. So this is something really to be taken care of a talent. Yes. you have as well, apart from music and swimming. <laughs> but I do think um, the mystical thing is what boys, Joseph Boys, also um, uh, uh, put in the foreground. The myst uh, everything is very mystical. And uh, what th this is what, when Joseph Boys was uh, uh, working, I was in Canada and I um, uh, made a cross of um, cafe filter, a cafe filter. And I was, do, didn't know what Boyce was doing, but I think if you are alive uh, uh, the whole day with that, that what is in front of you, it is so beautiful, and you are so one with this um, uh, thing, what is in the front of you, that you have to do something with it. Otherwise, you are getting crazy. And, and uh, if, if uh, I put the um, sheets together, ah, I was relaxing. And um, boys, um, maybe, um, Victoria, I, I make uh, mistakes, but what I get from uh, Joseph Boyce, he had had so um, uh, deep, dark, 
experiences and he was so grateful uh, to the people who had who helped him and uh, he was so cold and 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 um, uh, so he is so uh, grateful for everything what is surrounding him it is i'm sorry but it is not the summer what we are talking about but but i think um that is why boys also said uh, both um every every person is an artist yeah and i i do think so that every but is not aware of it and we we do not have to uh, paint or or make music or in in all the things what you are doing if you do it good it's fine you are you are, you you are one with it and and this is a very um uh, grateful uh satisfaction a deep satisfaction uh, that you get and it doesn't matter how it looks like and this is what I have to handle this because I cannot go back all the time at it because I had was a mother and, and a housewife. And so I just leave it. And, and then I think they can think whatever, if they don't like it, I, I do not like it as well. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I am satisfied with it, how it is. And, and this I had to learn and yeah. Satisfied with how it is. That's a great expression. Can we do a sort of a check belt to say what we are satisfied with how it is, what 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 area we find in our lives. Martini has already said it, <laughs> but you can say something else if you want to. Otherwise, who wants to? I'll just jump in to say that um... I would love to have this as a topic. Actually, Martini brought up several potential topics. Um, the topic of, of creativity and, and whether it matters what you produce or whether it's just the act of creation, because we are all artists. And um, to me, that goes back right back to, well, again, I'm quoting Conrad, my husband, that he always said, God is an artist. So insofar as we're created in the image of God, we are artists, um, which can't be said of the rest of the, of the other beings in the universe, whatever. Um, but also it would be a great future topic to talk about um, the struggle that women have if, if they are artists and, or, or not even artists, if, well, we're all artists, I guess, but, <laughs> but the struggle that women have to have in general, um, whether it's career and children or whether it's multiple careers or multiple responsibilities or um, however that plays out in lives, it doesn't have to be the, I mean, Martini and I, um, I think have a similar thing in the sense of the, 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 the struggle, how to, how to keep up one's, one artistic ad activity and raise a family and you know play that role but i think it it all it's it's the same you know if, like like christine you have children and and monia you know i mean it's and heidi has you have multiple um arenas of activity in your life and 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 certainly did when you you know before that how, how to juggle the various things and and keep them in balance um so i'd love to see all those topics i think they're and they really are women matters because because they I men no matter what no matter how how merged or whatever undifferentiated the the genders become um you know Arnold Schwarzenegger had a baby in a movie but <laughs> other than that <laughs> I think it's going to remain you know biologically it's going to remain that 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 women are the ones that 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 bear the children um, willy nilly, and that's an that's being an artist too in a different way. So um, I think Beatrice is my greatest artwork, maybe my only one. Um, 
So wait, and now I forgot what I was doing. Oh, just checking out. Oh, oh, what what was the question? <laughs> I forgot the question. Um, I totally forgot it. So I'll be quiet. How you are uh, where you are satisfied? What you are fine with as life is going? I, I had it said before in a bit. No, no, I remember now. I okay. This is my last word. This I'm going to quote. I'm going to quote Conrad again. Boy, I feel like it's his birthday almost. Um, his grandmother, um, his German grandmother, his other grandmother was Austrian, but his German grandmother, um, who was very Lutheran, her motto was, wie es ist, ist recht. And Beatrice and I, especially in the last two years, having to battle with the the potential loss of our entire inheritance etc we just keep claiming that over and over again and conrad's grandmother lost um she was an aristocrat in germany and she lost everything um in world war one because her family had bought war bonds or something i don't know something they lost their entire fortune and they had to go from door to door and sell zenf they had to make their own their own um zenf and sell it um so, so I can see why she said "vs ist es recht." So "vs ist es recht" with everything. Well, I, there's not much I can add. Um, I wake up every morning and then when I notice that I'm awake, I say, so is the sleep even, that's what life is. And yeah, uh, everything is just either uncontrollable or you can control it and you just have to surf it. That's how I live my days. And uh, Heidi, I hope you did take down the, top, the topics for next time because I won't be able to attend. Uh, this, this I'll see you in, in four weeks again, yeah. <laughs> Wie es ist, ist das recht. Uh, yeah. Yes, I did it's it. Passed, I, it's passed that. immer. <laughs> yeah, it's always right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, for me, as on a deeper level, everything is okay. Everything is right. On the surface structure, maybe not. On the deep structure, yes. That's what I, my check out is. I give over to Christine. Um, yeah, I, I can relate to that saying, it feels like things are the way they're supposed to be. Um, no huge struggles. And I'm just going to, you know, maintain that sense of freedom and going barefoot and enjoying longer days uh, as much as I can over the upcoming weeks. And settle settle into that uh i think the summer because of the heat you know i think it's easier to embody the season because our bodies do come more in contact it seems with the season whether we're wearing fewer clothes or no shoes or just outdoors but uh i'm gonna try to enjoy that and uh have it be the way it is so thank you beatrice um, I've been silent this whole time because I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's, a, it's such a, it's, it's a challenging question because on the one hand, I, I totally follow the Recht mentality and, you know, looking back, everything that's happened in my life has threaded together and resulted in new and beautiful things. And so 
in that way, that's, but satisfaction is a strange word for me. And I feel like if you reach full satisfaction, does that make you complacent? I don't know. That's where my mind went and that I, I don't want to be satisfied because I want to always be discovering something new and growing and exploring and being curious and kind of moving forward. And I'm afraid of the idea of satisfaction that that would then just be a plateau and a stopping point. Um, but I guess there can be an inner deeper satisfaction about, you know, who you are and who you were created to be. And then still, anyway, that was what came up for me when I, when I thought of that question, which is why I didn't answer immediately because I don't know, I don't know what I'm satisfied. Uh, um, who, who's, who's saying that I can't get no satisfaction? <laughs> <laughs> what is it the the rolling stones or the beatles or i don't know i can get no satisfaction yeah i don't remember who it is but i know i, I <laughs> it's familiar what's vivaldi <laughs> not vivaldi um yeah i don't know that's that's my checkout but but yes i i am i am grateful for everything that has happened to me to date and excited to see how the future continues to weave into that tapestry and always lovely to see all of you and excited for the next topic. Have we done the whole round? Okay, so have a nice evening or day, you uh, American uh, west coast people are you are east coast people but you have still half a half a day so we have almost finished because also the days are longer but when the uh, sky is gray they seem to be much shorter anyway it seems like mm, it's end here so i hope you enjoyed my background i think i had it already last time but the roses are now gone the, the first flowering is gone but other things are beautiful. I love to be with nature, and that is my satisfaction. I see you in two weeks. Have a nice time. Bye-bye.